My name is Delanier Shook, and I am the information collector. Now, last week, I celebrated the anniversary of this broadcast. And this week, I'm coming to you from Celebrities Hot Dogs in Asheville, North Carolina, to the place where I launched season two. Welcome to season three. Merrill, tell Kermit to stop messing with the fonts. Well, it's season three, and Merle got a great deal renting a seaside mansion named Dragon House. I wonder why it was such a good deal. And while we're here, Celebrity Hot Dogs would like to remind you that after 3 p.m. on Monday through Friday, you can get nine hot dogs for about $16 which is a great deal and they're great hot dogs. There will be a lot of awesome things coming up in this season, so let's get started. Last Thursday, American Airlines announced a partnership with Rosetta Stone and Skillshare to provide 150 creativity, productivity, and language classes on the AA in-flight entertainment channel, which already offers 600 movies and concerts. Uh, Rosetta Stone, of course, is the language learning program. They offer bite-sized language content, and according to this, you can quote, learn the local language in less than 10 minutes. I don't know about that, but even in the article, I already learned my favorite fan Spanish phrase. <clears throat> Me gustaría un café frío. That means I uh, just ordered an iced coffee in Spanish.
Skillshare will offer courses on things like sketchbook illustration, creative writing, flower arranging, and travel photography. Which probably travel photography would come in awesome if you're on a you know, um, flight going somewhere. Last Wednesday, IBM announced a partnership with the University of Illinois at Urbana and the state of Illinois for a 10-year, $200 million investment in the Discovery Accelerator Institute. This will look into high-performance computing, quantum information, and artificial intelligence, hybrid, cloud, and networked environments, and sustainability. A few of the projects they're looking to is the potential of edge computing and cloud security. And this is important, especially considering what happened a few weeks ago with the pipeline up the East Coast. They're looking to multi-node quantum processing test beds and artificial intelligence accelerated materials discovery. Last Friday, Samaritan's Purse issued a press release highlighting their work with physically disabled farmers in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Uh, now, last week I brought to you the very sad story of a um, Malawian peacekeeper who was killed in the Congo. Well, a lot of people are working to help the folks in the Congo. The UN is one of them and Samaritan's Purse is another. Uh, according to Nicole Solving, the uh, Samaritan's Purse DRC program development officer, she said, quote, these are farmers who all live with some sort of physical disability, but they've been able to come together as a group and learn new growing techniques. Uh, end quote. Samaritan's Purse is working to equip vulnerable and marginalized populations to better provide for themselves. Sometimes one farmer they, just, they uh, interviewed uh, said this was as simple as a hoe, a watering can, and seeds. But they're giving these people the ability for a new life. Last Wednesday, the German airline carrier Lufthansa announced Onboard Delights. Uh, this is catered meals on flights lasting more than 60 minutes and will be available in economy. Um, they will be provided by, prepared by Gate Gourmet Catering, uh, using recipes by Dean and David, which is a gastro, uh, preparation group. Uh, the confections and coffee will be provided by Dolmare, including an Ethiopian coffee blend that will provide funding to humanitarian efforts. Um, the packaging will be paper-wise material made from agricultural waste material, and it will be CO2 neutral. Um, now, this is not free. You do have to pay for this. However, they will provide a water bottle and a chocolate surprise for free to all passengers. Last Friday, the U.S. State Department issued a press release announcing that U.S. Customs and Border Protection had issued a withhold release order for Dalian Ocean Fishing Company. Uh, this means they will detain the imports of the products from this Chinese company. Um, 
they allege that this PRC-based firm uses forced labor in their fishing. They mostly produce tuna. Uh, these, they uh, require this forced labor to work 18 to 22 hour days. Suffering from uh, hunger, restrictive communications, they have alleged that they do not provide sufficient medical care for these workers, that they physically abuse them, and that they use debt-based coercion, which we have seen used in other vulnerable populations, uh, including illegal immigrants here to the United States. They will be brought to the United States and then they will be forced into labor to pay off their debt. It's a very, very evil system. And in fact, last year, the uh, State Department revoked about a dozen visas for individuals who were complicit in this activity. Last Tuesday, Australian construction materials firm Boral advised shareholders not to accept a offer of $6.50 a share by the diversified investment group Seven Group Holdings. Uh, evidently, Seven Group wants to at least increase its holdings in Boral, perhaps even buy the company out. Uh, now, while the current share price of Boral runs at $6.74, it was as low as $6.17 earlier this month. Um, the, uh, the firm on Monday announced it had bought back, last Monday, had bought back $450 million of 3% debt. Um, this firm, I actually, I mentioned it, oh, it's been a month or two ago, but they are, uh, they're a materials construction firm, and uh, they've been going through a restructuring. On the 15th of May, it announced expansion of its North American fly ash sector. And this is significant because as coal-powered power plants reduce their generation of coal ash, they've got to find ash somewhere. So they've been looking into other places to get fly ash. Um, on the 8th of this month, Standard & Poor's review re revised its outlook on Boral from negative to stable. Now, it's possible that when SGH decided to by offer cash for the shares, it was because of this negative rating. But what Standard & Poor's said is they like the company now because it's got a billion dollars of surplus capital and they think they're gonna do another stock buyback within the next 12 months. On April the 1st, and this is what I uh, talked about, I reported on, they sold, they owned, half of a joint venture with another company. They sold it to that company getting $1.33 billion and they did a stock buyback. So Standard & Poor's thinks that this Australian construction material firm will do another stock buyback. Um, but very, very interesting. It's a it, it shows what's going on in the economy as we come back out of the pandemic. We're the economy is booming. We're building everywhere. Uh, it is, we all should just be so thankful for how much better it is than a year ago.